Right, I just want to do some load testing on this big power supply. This is a 24 volt, 40 amp power supply. Obviously one issue with testing something like this is um, what do you actually use for the load? Now this is eventually going into um, a big... Uh, uh, this is eventually going into a big installation with uh, quite a lot of these uh, big lead strips. Um, but obviously without the full installation um, I don't have anything to test it with. Now it's the sort of thing I do occasionally but not often enough to build a proper high power dummy load so over the years I've used various sort of things like loads of big power resistors on a heat sink or so other sort of big chunky uh, power resistors and um, things like that. That was just stuck in the with a big fan in the middle of it um, and this this was used for a 144 channel dimmer I did a while ago and it's another load for a um, high channel count demo with a big blower at the bottom that ducks, blows air across it. Um, one problem, the, these resistors, it's quite tempting to think, oh these are like a big chunk of metal, we can stick it to a heat sink, stick a fan on it and you know, overload them grossly. Um, don't do that, because what can happen is this. Now, this one just popped out. A few years ago I was using a similar resistor as a ballast for a laser. Um, which was sort of basically running four-way rectified mains at a something like 20 amps, and the resistor decided to sort of it, the end shot out because it was a high voltage lower current. The wire wasn't actually that thick, so this shot out across the bench, trailing like a taser, um, like sort of trail of the resistance wire with rectified mains voltage on it. So. Um, Okay, you can overload these a little bit, but um, don't go too silly. If you start hearing cracking noises, um, turn off rather quickly. So I was thinking, well, you know, how else can I do do this without having to sort of buy lots and lots of resistors? I thought, oh, hang on a minute. What's simpler than a load of wire in a bucket of water? Because the um, it takes an awful lot of energy to heat up water. So as long as the um, you know, the wire is sort of reasonably spread out, you don't get get any hot spots. Um, this can actually dissipate, you know, a huge amount of power until you know, the water gets hot enough to boil. But obviously, this and this thing's been doing um, about 800 watts for about 10 minutes now, and it's gone up about sort of five degrees. And obviously, you get a little bit of an early warning once it starts to boil. Then uh, that's a good sign that it's probably got a bit too hot. But obviously, the nice thing about this is for a longer term test, you just just use a bigger bucket. Um, I've used enamelled wire here just because obviously if you just use bare wire you'd get like electrolytic effects and the thing will start corroding. Um, you probably don't want to use plastic covered wire purely because of the you know the, the thermal insulation um, between the wire and the water. Um, enamelled wire so it gives you some electrical insulation. One slight hazard is that the um, if this does yeah, as soon as this comes out of the water you'll see it does get rather hot rather quickly. That's the water boiling off of it. Um, but that smoke is actually quite nasty, so you don't really want to um, be going there. But um, yes, yeah, so as, as, as a quick solution, it uh, works quite well.